can see we actually get more um, we actually get more outliers here um, in our point cloud. Hey guys, welcome to a new video in this point cloud tutorial. In this video here, we're going to talk about outlier removal on point clouds in the Open 3D library. So we're going to talk about when we actually like have our point clouds and we often actually like have outliers in our point cloud because we don't have this like perfect data structure. We have a lot of noise and so on and outliers in our actual like point cloud when we either get them from a, a depth map from stereo vision or like some other different kind of like depth sensors like cameras or like data scanners. But first of all, remember to join the Discord server. I'll link to it down in the description here. You can join the channel, chat about computer vision, deep learning, AI, and so on. You can also become a member of the channel if you want to support the channel with a small monthly fee and everything will go to create more and better quality content here uh, on the channel. So thank you guys. So let's just jump straight into the code here where we're going to go over these examples uh, that we have from Open4D. So we're just going to go through the examples, talk about like how we can actually like remove uh, point like outliers in our point clouds, how we can do different kind of operations. We're going to look at the results and some of the parameters uh, that we can tune because this is actually like, really important when we're working with point clouds uh, to actually like, be able to do some post processing of our point clouds to remove outliers, reduce the noise in our point clouds so we can do the operations uh, easier. While, like, for example, post estimation, segmentation, um, and all those things that we can do are on our point clouds, or also like stitching point clouds together so we can actually like reconstruct whole environments captured by only like images of our environments and so on. So first of all here, we're just going to import the different kind of modules that we need. So we have Open3D as O3D. So when, you, when we're using O3D here, we're actually like using the methods from Open3D library. We also have NumPy, OS and Sys. And then down here for the visualization part, so we can actually like get up this uh, interactive visualization window so we can actually like rotate and flip around the um, flip around the point clouds after we have done uh, the post processing on them. So here we're just going to open it up here and then we're just going to set this od3 tutorial dot interactive equal to none. Um, so we're just going to open up this um, visualization window. So now we're just going to go straight into like point cloud outlier removal. So here we can see when collecting data from scanning devices as we just talked about like either uh, cameras that can return depth to, so depth cameras, stereo vision setups, and so on. We're going to go into more details how we can actually like generate these point clouds. I already have a video about stereo vision, how we can get a point cloud from stereo vision here on the channel. So make sure to check those that, that video out as well. We're going to have an, uh, a lot of those videos here on the channel. We're going to kind of, kind of like construct them from different kind of sensors and also different kind of like uh, projects and applications of different kind of things. So we're both going to do post estimation reconstruction of environments by using cameras um, and so on. So here we can see that the resulting point cloud tend to contain noise and artifacts that uh, that one would like to remove. And this is just the exact thing that we just uh, talked about in the start of this video. So here this tutorial addresses the outlier removal features of Open4D. So now we're just going to remove the outliers that we have in our actual like, point cloud just to get a, a better and more precise point cloud uh, that we can do our operations on. So first of all, we need to prepare our input data, um, and we are first of all we're going to load in um, we're going to load in a point cloud, and then we're going to downsample it using this voxel downsample as we talked about in the previous video. So how we can actually like, just downsample our point cloud so we don't have like um, that many points as we has had in the initial point cloud. Uh, we're actually like, just looking at a voxel or like some kind of like boundary box grid, and then we just have a number of boundary boxes. We check for all the points or all the points in those boundary boxes. And then we just combine that to actually like one point. So we could have like, for example, 10 points in one voxel and that will be downsampled to only one point. And then it will be centered at the mean position of all those other points that were inside that voxel. So if you want to know more details about voxel downsampling, how we can use that to do normal estimation and so on, make sure to check the previous videos out uh, throughout this tutorial. We're going to go through it step by step, how we can actually like get from the basics to more advanced things in this point cloud tutorial. So here we're just going to load in the point cloud as we know from uh, from the last video, we're just going to read uh, read point cloud this function. We're just going to pass in the test data that is provided by OM4D. So we have a cloud bin here too um, that we're going to load in. These are just some parameters for zooming and how we can actually like rotate when we're actually like going to draw the geometries. So every time we're going to draw a point cloud, we're just going to use this function from OD3, or OO3D here, visualization, draw geometries. And then we'll just draw everything. We can specify some parameters. We can also delete those and then just zoom in and rotate it with uh, with the mouse. Then the only thing we need to pass in 
is the actual like point cloud that we want to visualize. So here we have the original point cloud we're going to visualize, and then we're going to downsample it with a voxel size of 0 0.02. Uh, and then again, we're just going to draw the, the, the downsampled uh, point cloud. So now we're just going to go up here and import the actual modules. And then we're going to load in the point cloud. And then, uh, so this is the original point cloud, as we can see. And now when we actually like close this window, it will open up this downsampled uh, by voxel. So here we can see the downsampled point cloud. Uh, if I just scroll down a bit here, we can see that this is actually like a more dense point cloud. And then we're taking these voxels, looking how many points is actually inside the voxels in a, in a grid over the whole point cloud. And then we're just downsampling those. So we actually like have these points instead of all these points down here. We still get a really nice representation of our environment. We can still, still see like this chair thing, something on the wall. We can see the wall, the floor and so on. So still have all information, but with less points. So we can actually like speed up our our processing and our operations on the point clouds later on. So we're just going to close this window here. So now we have actually like downsampled our point cloud. Alternatively here, we can use a uniform downsample. So downsample the point cloud by collecting every nth point. So this, this can also be a method that we can actually like use um, to actually like downsample. So just every time we have five points, we're just going to downsample it to one point uniformly. We're probably using more like voxel downsampling and, and it, we will probably get a better representation also with less lesser points than with this uniform downsample uh, by using the voxel downsample. But we're just going to see the results here. So again, we're just going inside PCD. So our point cloud has this function, uniform downsample, and then we just specify like every K point, like when we actually want to downsample uh, for every nth point. And in this example, N is equal to five. We're just going to run it and then we can see the, the output here. So we can see we get a bit more like noisy or like unstructured point cloud when we're actually using uh, this compared to uh, to, com to compare to this voxel downsampling that we had uh, up here at the top. But we still downsample it. We get less points in our point cloud. We could play around with the with the end parameter or like the k parameter here, and then try to get some other results. But often we're just using this voxel uh, downsampling to have to get act like downsample our point cloud. Um, so here, select the down, downsample. The following helper function uses select by index, which takes a binary match to output only the selected points. The selected points um, and the non-selected points are visualized. So here we're just going to display our inline and outliers before we can actually like, remove them. So we're going to, to look at some functions uh, or like some algorithms that can actually like, find the inliers uh, or like the outliers in our point cloud. And then this function here, all it does is actually just displaying uh, the inliers and outliers. So we need to specify the point cloud and then also the index here. So then we have our point cloud and the index. This will be the outlier, our inlier points. And then we have our outlier points here. So we actually have two point clouds where we just divide our point cloud into outliers and inliers by using these algorithms that I'm going to show you uh, from statistics. So again, we're just going to paint them in one uniform color for the outliers and the inliers, um, another color draw geometries to just visualize what's actually like going on. So we're just going to run this function. So now we're going down to the actual algorithms that does this outlier removal. And all of them is actually just some statistical approach uh, that they're taking. So we can see that this statistical outlier removal function removes the points that are further away from the neighbors compared to the average for the point cloud, like to, to the average of the point cloud. So it takes two input parameters. So we have the number of neighbors, which specifies how many neighbors are taken into account in order to calculate the average distance uh, for a given point. So we're actually just looking at a neighborhood and then we have this like average distance for a given point. And then we can actually like, specify if that is an outlier or an inlier when we're looking at, at these neighbors. We also need to specify a standard deviation here or like a ratio for standard deviation. So which allows the setting the threshold level based on the standard deviation of the average distances across the point cloud. So we're going to look at all the average distances uh, between the point clouds where we have this uh, standard deviation uh, threshold that we're going to set up. So the lower this number, the more aggressive the filter will be. So if we, if we actually like set to one or like two, so it's actually like just how, how, how would we allow the points to be inside or like how do we specify if this is a point and is an outlier and out, uh, or like inlier. And we can see that if we just have a really high standard deviation, we allow a lot of points to actually like be inside um, or like we actually like uh, specify them as an inlier instead of an outlier. And the lower this number here becomes, we, we won't accept like that many numbers 
uh, because we have a, like a smaller or like lower standard deviation of our like distribution of points. So here we're just going to use this voxel downsampled point cloud. Then we're just going to call remove statistical outlier. We need to specify the number of neighbors. So we're going to specify we want to look at 20 neighbor points. And then we're just going to set a standard deviation ratio here uh, equal to two. We're going to display the inliers and outliers at, with the function um, up from, from above. So now we're just going to run it here. We can see all the gray points here is actually like uh, is actually like our inliers and then the outliers will be the red points. So we can see all the red points here is actually like the outliers. So we don't really have that many outliers here in this point cloud, uh, but it also depends on like this kind of like the structure. If you had a more noisy point cloud, you will get more outliers detected um, compared to this one here. But we can also play around with the parameters and see uh, what it does. We can set it this one, one equal to, to one. We can try again and now we can see we actually get more um, we actually get more outliers here um, in our point cloud. Now we actually get like all of these corners or like all of these like lines here at the end of the border in a point cloud would like like be um, would actually like be outliers. We can also see some outliers inside uh, the wall here where there is a great distance from this point to all the other points here in the neighbors um, around it. So this will be actually like uh, taken into into as an outlier. We can see the same uh, exact same thing happening here in the chair and also at some of the boundaries here where we don't really have points inside or at least close uh, at least close to those points that we take take as outliers we can also try to play around with the neighbors so we can set it equal to 10 neighbors instead we can see that we get like we don't really get that many points here at the boundaries as before but we get a lot more points here in the middle because we have a, like a lower neighborhood that we're looking at we can also try to set this to 50 and see what it does and now we can just see like all the borders here when we're taking into account like a 50 50 point neighborhood then we'll just get all the all like the boundary values here so you need to play around with this parameter here again often we will have more noisy um more noisy point clouds so we need to tune these parameters and the last method here or like algorithm here that we're going to look at is this radius outlier removal so the point here is that before we actually looked at these uh, different kind of like neighbors and we still have the neighbors, but now we're going to look at a radius around those at the, uh, around that neighborhood. And if, if the point is actually like inside that radius, then it's an inlier. And if it's outside, then we uh, say that that is an outlier. So here radius outlier removal, remove the point that have a few neighbors in a given sphere around them. So two parameters can be used to tune the filter uh, to your data here. So we have the number of points again, which like lets you pick the, the, the minimum amount of points that the sphere uh, should contain. And then we also have this radius which defines the radius of the sphere uh, that will be used for counting um, counting the actual like, neighbors. So we just have like a sphere or like some kind of like circle, but when we have in three dimensions, it's a sphere. Uh, and then we just have a radius of that sphere. And then we just look at the minimum amount of points that we actually like, should have inside of this sphere. And if we should take it as an inlier or outlier if it's outside uh, that sphere. So again, we just take our voxel downsample point cloud, call remove radius outliers. We, sp we specify the number of points here. So the minimum amount of points that the sphere should contain. So this is really important that you, that you, uh, that you, uh, that you know. The minimum amount of points that the sphere should contain and then the radius here of the sphere. So we can play around the radius here, but first of all, we're just going to take these standard parameters. We're going to run the program and then we can actually like see again, we get almost the same outliers as in the previous example where we use this statistical approach approach with the standard deviation and the neighborhood so we get again we get that the borders or like the boundaries here of the wall the chairs and so on where there's not like that many points uh, around them so when we're actually like looking at these fears and so on so if we play around with the radius here let's for example just go down to uh, 0.03 and we, if we run it again now we can see that the radius of our fear is is so small that we, we we just think that everything here is actually like outliers. So this parameter is really, really important that we play around with. Uh, so it just thinks that every, uh, like almost all the points here is actually like outliers um, in our point cloud when we're using this, uh, this radius here. We can try to like make a larger radius, so 0 0.07 maybe. And then we run it again here and now we'll get no outliers here in our point cloud in, in, except of these two points that we can see uh, down here at the bottom. So this is really important parameters that you need to play around with uh, again and you can just see like even if we just change it by 
and like 0 0.01 it just makes such a huge huge uh, huge difference it also depends on the number of points here that we want to look at let's for example try with the 32 and go back here to 0 0.05 we run it again again it will just see everything here as outliers in our actual like um, point cloud even though we still have these ranges down here we can also try to set this to 8 and see what happens and now we can see we get the exact same results as before because these are the number of points that we're actually looking at that should be in inside of that that fear that we have specified here before we're looking at the inliers or the outliers so again we're just detecting these two points in our point cloud down here at the bottom so we need to play around with this parameter we can try, try 12 we will get a bit more results we can maybe go up to 20 we'll get more results again and this is actually like this might actually be a really good representation of our inliers and the outliers in our point clouds so yeah, that's it for this video here guys we've been over like how we can actually like, again load in a point cloud downsample it and how we can then remove outliers in a point cloud because when we have point clouds when we are operating with point clouds and we get them in from a sensor we will have so much noise and we will have a lot of outliers we're going to see that in, in other videos where we're actually like going to use our own point clouds that is really noisy and messy and we will just use this um, or like we will get better results by having these outliers instead of just taking like the boundary points here in this sort of kind of uh, perfect point cloud uh, that we have here. So thank you guys for watching this video here and remember to hit the subscribe button and bell notification on the video here so we'll get a notification when I upload a new video in this point cloud, uh, point cloud tutorial where we're talking about how we can do all these different kind of operations on point clouds. We're going to create a, to a tons of videos about projects, different kind of applications, how we can create our own point clouds and do and use all of these methods that we're going to learn throughout this tutorial here when we're going to look at the examples that are provided by uh, Open4D, both the code examples, but also the already like 3D st data structures with the point clouds, some images with depth and so on. I also have this computer vision tutorial where we're talking about camera calibration, basic image operations, uh, stereo vision, how we can create point clouds from stereo vision. If you're interested in that tutorial, I'll link to it up here or else I'll see you next video guys. Bye for now.